sit the boat out there in that 20 or 22 feet and try to make as long as a cast as I possibly can with that bait. That's something that I always do when I'm deep cranking offshore. I want to make as absolutely long of a cast as I possibly can. I may reach fish out there that I never even graft, but I really want to get that bait down to the bottom and it spend as much time on the bottom as physically possible. That is such a big key. If that deep crankbait is not making contact with the bottom, I don't have much confidence in catching a fish. Hey everybody, welcome back. It is June and we are here with the technique of the month again. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the pick four video from this month and really want to dive into my very favorite way to catch them this time of the year. I mentioned it a little bit in that, uh, you know, in, in that pick four and kind of how the fish tend to tend to break up a little bit this time of the year. The, those schools of fish have moved out deep following the bait fish and the shad and stuff that have pulled out there. Some of those fish have stayed shallow and really targeting bluegill or crawfish or, you know, whatever other type of, of bait is still hanging around up there shallow. Even still got a few lingering spawners sometimes in the month of June, but, um, you know, the big groups of fish, those big, you know, mass quantities of them, as well as some of those really biggest ones sometimes, definitely do slide on out to that deeper water. And that used to be an untapped way to catch them. At one point in time, I can remember when I was getting started fishing, some of the guys who were just take everybody's money every single weekend. You know, we're either good with their lock electronics or just knew those places historically where those bass went every single year and could uh, could go out there and go deep cranking and could just, you know, really mop up on those big schools of fish. So it was something that was always a lot of draw to that when I was getting into fishing. You know, of course that was before, uh, a long time before side imaging, even way before GPS, you know, a lot of the stuff that we had on our boats then it was a big deal if you had just a you know just a, a graph if if you were any more than a paper graph you know it's kind of past that time frame but if you had just a liquid crystal as odd as that <laughs> is to say um, because everybody has has got you know something better than that at this point in time but gps was really not even heard of but certainly not down imaging side imaging 360 live all these things that we've got uh, got at our disposal now there was a there was such a mysterious aspect of going out offshore and trying to find a group of fish out there but we've took a lot of the guesswork out of it now with the electronics that we've got and uh we typically know before we ever shut the motor off if there's a lot of bass down there and maybe even know just how we're going to catch them before we do that just with how those fish are set up so uh a big thing that uh, that is still so very effective is deep cranking, and, and hands down, my favorite way to catch them this time of the year. I I love to fish a crankbait. I love to fish one in two foot of water. I love to fish one in 18 feet of water. Um, I, I just I enjoy making fish bite. I feel like, and that's what you do a lot with a crankbait, whether that's shallow or deep. You're getting a reaction out of those fish. You really can trigger them into biting sometimes when they truly don't want to. And that's something I feel like I'm better at with a crankbait than I am anything else out there, any other, um, any other bait style, any other technique um, from anything else I've got in my boat at my disposal. A crankbait does that extremely well. Gonna, gonna go through the setup again really quick, and then we'll really jump into to the technique for me of, of deep cranking. Um, setup for me, it's always gonna be the same unless I really step up to a great big giant crankbait but for all of my deep cranking, anything from like a, you know, an eight or 10 foot diving bait to a 20 foot diving bait, which is where most of that's done at, is a Bass Pro cranking stick, seven foot, six inch, medium heavy action rod, Johnny Morse Platinum, six, eight to one gear ratio reel. And I practically always 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm gonna have 12 pound XPS fluorocarbon line on this. The very, very minimal times where I'm gonna vary from that. I may go up to 14 if I'm fishing around a lot of brush, um, you know, if I'm a lot of cover, a lot of heavy cover or something. And again, if I'm just trying to get every single inch of depth out of this, I may drop down to 10 pound test only in those places where there's no cover around whatsoever. But 12 pound test, 99.9% .9 of the time, that is my line for any type of deeper offshore style cranking. A big thing with this, and I'll reference electronics a lot in this video, that, that is such a big, big deal anymore. Side imaging is, is my, 
I mean, that is, that is my bread and butter. That's where I'm going to spend a lot of time because if I don't see those fish there, I'm probably not going to stop. I'm not going to have a lot of confidence. I, I just, I've got so much confidence in those electronics. I'm, I'm going to find them. I, I feel like if there's a good group of fish down there, I'm going to know it before I ever turn the key off. So that's a big part of it, but okay. So let, you've, you've idled around, you've used your Lake Master mapping. You know, you found some breaks, you found a hump, you found whatever type of structure. You've used your sight imaging, you've located these fish. Okay, now what? What are you gonna to do to get your bait to them? That's really where the fishing part of this is gonna come in. Big thing for me, my standard issue setup. So I've found a point, so that's called a rounded point, and I found the fish on the, on the upper outside corner of it, you know, where it rolls off into deeper water. Let's just say most of those fish were in the, the, the top of this point is in 10 feet of water. It rolls off. I started marking fish about 12 feet. I marked them out to 18 or so. And then once I got to 20 foot, you know, it kind of got cleaned back up. Didn't mark a lot of fish out beyond that. The point rolls all, on off into 30 feet of water. Where are you going to put the boat? Where's your bait going to go the first time? That's what, you know, kind of what your first questions are, or what, where you should be thinking once you've idled across that school of fish. The way I'm going to set up most every time to start with, I'm going to put the boat in deeper water. I'm going to cast my bait to shallower water and I'm going to crank that bait back out to me. Okay. I don't want to sit, um, my, my first rule of thumb, again, this is the first rule of thumb. I don't like to sit, you know, kind of in that same depth range as the fish. If I marked them out to about 18, I'm going to, I'm going to, First, pick up a bait that's going to run at least deep enough to get to kind of that deeper edge of those fish. A DT-16 will run 17 or 18 feet on a cast. That's going to be my first bait I go to. If those fish were up higher, you know, up a little bit shallower on it, I may drop to a 14. If they were up right on the top of it in 10 foot, then I'm going to go with a DT-10. But seeing how those fish were in that 12 to 18 foot range, I'm going to go with that DT-16. It'll get down to the bottom quick in that 12 foot. It'll stay on the bottom throughout that 16 and, and it'll start, you know, kind of tickling the bottom in that 17, 18 foot range before coming back up to the boat. I'm going to sit the boat in 20, 22 feet of water is kind of what, where I'm thinking, you know, just given the way this point's laid out, sit the boat out there in that 20 or 22 feet and try to make as long as a cast as I possibly can with that bait. That's something that I always do when I'm deep cranking offshore. I want to make as absolutely long of a cast as I possibly can. I may reach fish out there that I never even graft, but I really want to get that bait down to the bottom and it spend as much time on the bottom as physically possible. That is such a big key. If that deep crankbait is not making contact with the bottom, I don't have much confidence in catching a fish. You'll catch the odd one here and there, and this is largemouth fishing. If I'm up north smallmouth fishing, total different game. That's not what we're talking about. But if I'm largemouth fishing, that bait needs to be making contact with the bottom. The best way to do that is a long bomb cast. That's the reason for that seven and a half foot rod, good quality reel, and fairly small diameter line to get the bait way out there to get it down to the bottom quick. So I've made this long bomb cast, boat sitting in 22, my bait probably landed in 11 or 12. What are you gonna do next? So I'm gonna point the rod tip down and I'm gonna start bringing it. And now we're talking, I mean, hey, it's June, it's warm out, water temperatures are up there. You're not gonna out reel these fish. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. With a six, eight to one gear ratio reel, as fast as you can possibly reel it, they can still run it down and they can still eat it. So I'm gonna be at what I would call above a medium high speed. I mean, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be bringing this thing. I'm gonna be bringing it pretty hard. If I'm fishing on a place like Lake Chickamauga that has had tons of pressure, the fish see baits all the time, they never get a break from it, I'm gonna take it up a notch even faster than that. But day in and day out, even fishing an unpressured school of fish, I'm gonna be fishing this bait quick. This isn't gonna be a slow, lackadaisical, we're reeling the bait along, you know, it's bumping along the bottom, we like to feel how many rocks are down there. I don't care how many rocks I make contact with, I want to know it's hitting the bottom and I want to be just absolutely burning it through there. Very rarely am I even going to really stop this bait. I may slow up just for a half a second, just where the bait is wiggling, 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 and then it kind of maybe just hangs for a second and then goes again. I never want that bait to stop completely dead in its tracks. Never, ever. 
at most I want it to slow down and then take off again. So just keep that in mind. You're not going to out crank these fish this time of the year. They're always going to want to run that bait down or be able to run that bait down as fast as you're able to wind it. So that's a point that I just cannot stress enough with deep cranking. And that's anything from a, a six foot, seven foot, eight foot diving bait to a 20 foot diving bait and beyond. As fast as you can possibly reel this thing is going to catch you more fish than anything else about it. That's more important than color. It's more important than action. Speed is the single most important thing with deep crankbait fishing, bar none. Um, so that's, you know, that's my go-to deal. Set the boat deep, throw up shallow, make a good long cast as long as I possibly can, keep the bait on the bottom as much as physically possible, really, really bringing that bait. Now here's what's gonna change from time to time. Sometimes with pressure, those fish, you know, so say you found this school of fish, they were fresh. This is the first time they'd ever been fished for. You pulled up there, you caught six or eight, bam, 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 bam. Well, then they kind of slacked off and, and you could switch techniques and you maybe catch a few more. Well, then they've busted up and, and you've kind of you've kind of done as much damage as you can possibly do there. What actually happened a lot of times, there may have been 20 or 30 fish down there. You caught six or eight of them. You pulled the rest of those fish to the boat. We see that a lot more now. We actually realize just how much it goes on with our live sonar and stuff. We saw it before in the past with 2D where you'd catch one and then you see a couple marks go from the boat back down towards the bottom. So we saw it some, but we really realize now just how many fish follow each other into the boat and then they will disperse and they're, they're kind of in an uncatchable mode at that point in time. You've got a couple of options here. First thing is hopefully you've got enough places, enough schools of fish that you just go rotate somewhere else. You go mess up a couple more schools. You come back here a couple hours later, they're set up. You can catch, you know, catch some more of them again. That's the ideal scenario. Sometimes this may be the only place you've got. What are you going to do then? The best option is to change, change angles, move in a little bit shallower, kind of fish this place at a little different angle. Sometimes what I found that can be really effective even is to completely do a 180 on what you were doing. Sit the boat up on the very top of this point, up in that 10 foot of water, make a long cast out into that deep water and bring, bring your crankbait back uphill. Like I said in the beginning, that's never my first option, but sometimes that can be a really effective way to milk a few more plates off of a group, off of a school of fish like that with the same bait. You don't even have to actually change techniques. You can just take the same exact bait, show it to them from a total different angle and be able to catch a few more of them. So that's, it's so important, your boat positioning, the angle of your retrieve, and the speed are, uh, are a lot of the key factors when it comes to deep cranking. Um, one little quick story before we wrap this up on, on deep cranking. That Lake Chickamauga event on Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour, we fished down there in early June. I mean, it's prime time of the year to be catching those fish out offshore. We all knew on the Tennessee River there's going to be a lot of schools of fish. I had found a lot of fish with side imaging in practice, and there were some places where um, you know, I knew that there were big groups of fish, but I just couldn't get them to bite. One of those places, I think, is where the tournament ended up getting won by Kevin Van Dam, and it was exactly what I didn't do. It, it was just an angle deal. Um, I really learned that later in the event, you know, to bring that bait at a different angle, bringing it uphill more there. That's what Kevin was doing from the start, and that was a spot that I had, I had marked fish. I had that waypoint. Um, but he was just fishing it better than I was, different than I was, and was able to catch those fish to make it not only the championship round, but to, uh, but to be able to win that event. So your angle can be everything. It's not just about saying, well, here's the fish. They didn't bite this time. They're not going to bite, whatever. With deep cranking, it is the best way to make those fish bite when they're out, out there out offshore and, uh, and have been pressured. You can get a reaction bite out of them that you just can't get with anything else. Just about changing your speed, changing your direction, changing your angle. That is a big key with deep crankbait fishing. That's a wrap. 